Hey friends, what is up and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title of today's video, I am just another person filling your inbox with the mid-year book freakout tag. I'm gonna list up here a video that I filmed well, I filmed it today, but I uploaded it on Monday. It is kind of a channel update where I kind of want to go in the direction of my channel, addressing some things that have been happening in our community because I feel like a lot of people aren't really sure how to continue on business as usual. There is no business as usual moving forward. And that video was kind of where I talked about, um, like I said, channel updates, life updates, kind of where I've been the last six months and just how I've been feeling. And then a lot of the things that have been happening over the course of about the last month. I did want to have it as a resource for people because I, like other people, wasn't really sure how to bring normal content back to my channel. So I do have that up. It is a bit of a discussion video. It's quite long. So for that, I am sorry. But like I said, I did want to have that just up for you guys to be able to view. Today, however, we are doing the mid-year book freakout tag. This is a tag that I never miss. I either don't miss people um, when they upload it and watching it, or I've always filmed it myself. I think I missed one year maybe i at least cannot find it on my channel i may have privated it i'm not sure or just deleted it but i did want to sit down and film it today because i've actually not read that much this year i think i've read maybe 20 books which for me is crazy and which is why part of the reason why i'm linking that other video for you guys because it does sort of address why i haven't been reading why i've been really struggling and kind of how i've been feeling and that is why some of these answers in this are going to be slightly repetitive um a couple of them here and there will be but I did try to really think about the questions and pull these books for you so I hope you enjoy this um obviously I'm going to tag a bunch of people in a pinned comment but there's one creator specifically that I did want to tag for this and I do want to talk about and that is Ben. Ben is a new booktuber um he's very articulate he's very well thought out in some of the discussions that he's having and he's one of those people that just kind of popped up on Twitter and that is sort of how I discovered him and it was through conversation and stuff and I have to say Ben is one of the easiest people to talk to and his content is some of the easiest content to watch. If you like my content that is very sit down like you're talking to a friend kind of content which is the general like vibe that I think people get and the comment that I get most often from you guys, um, you're gonna love Ben. Ben is very, he just has like an aura around him and like I said when you're coming into this community it can be kind of hard to figure out sort of where like what space you want to exist in and I feel like Ben just said fuck that and wants to exist in whatever space he wants to exist in so if he likes somebody he's going to talk to them he's going to be really friendly um you oftentimes, I think, get, when new people come into the community, you kind of get this vibe that they're, like, trying, uh, like, I don't think they have any ill intent, but they are trying to be very much so, like, hey, I'm talking to you, like, talk back to me, like, I want to make friends. And Ben, it was just very easy, like, I feel, like, a, a very, like, friendly connection with him. So if you guys haven't subscribed to Ben, haven't checked out any of his videos, I will link his channel at the very top of the description bar of this video. I think it is, he just makes great content, and he's a lot of fun to follow. He's very, um... He is very connected, I think, with his viewership as well. He's very much so like, what do you guys want to see? And, you know, like like I said, also having very important discussions. And I just really like his content and I really like him. So if you're looking for a new booktuber to kind of, you know, like get rid of some of the old and bring in some of the new, I would definitely check out Ben. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on this tag because this tag is super long. Like I said, I'll leave a pinned comment to other people. I need to see who's done this and who hasn't. If I tag you and you've already done it, go ahead and skip it. Um, but the first question is, best book you've read so far in 2020? And that was actually a really easy answer for me. Um, because this one, I don't know, like, really hit me in a lot of different ways. Um, and that would be The Great Alone by Kirsten Hanna. Kristen Hanna? Kristen Hanna. This book follows our main character, what is her name? Lenny and her father, Ernst Albright. Um, he is a POW, I believe, in the Vietnam War. And he, once he comes home, is very much so like having trouble adjusting to normal life, which does tend to happen. I am from a military family. Grandpas, uncles, you know, my father, my ex-husband, everybody was in the military. So I have a lot of first-hand knowledge of kind of how that can happen and how it can be kind of hard to adjust because to be in the military you kind of have to become a robot essentially. You have to think as one entity so when you're reintroduced into normal everyday average life it kind of can be hard to exist without the uh, stability and the you know like the boundaries that you're supposed to stay within and a lot of 
normal everyday things don't really fit into that especially when it comes to rigidity and how people treat each other and like the work ethic it can be really hard and that is sort of what her father struggles with so she is 13 and Lenny, her dad, and her mom do move to rural Alaska because somebody that he was in the military with actually leaves him a plot of land when he passes away. So they move up there to start this brand new life. And this book was really interesting and I feel like a lot of the reviews that I read people said that th this is just so far-fetched and crazy and as somebody who grew up in the great state of Alaska I will tell you this is one of the most accurate books about living in Alaska you will ever read. A lot of people have this idea of Alaska in their mind and while it can be wonderful and it can be very beautiful and it can be like very community based and whatnot it's also kind of shitty <laughs> like I have no desire to live there again I have no desire to go back there I don't want to visit like I don't I don't like it there um because I definitely lived in an area where a lot of the things that happen in this book happened you hear about your friends you experience it yourself I experienced some of this myself not to this extent because this is a very like kind of gruesome book to read um basically Lenny's dad goes a little bit crazy he goes a little stir crazy because where they live is very cut off it's a very 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 small like village they live in there's like 50 people maybe um and they do live in an area where there is a lot of darkness so there's a lot of depression there's a lot of drinking there's a lot of drugs there's a lot of um abuse and this book just hit me it hit me so hard and it was such a stunning story it was so heartbreaking and raw and real and I loved it and everyone I know that has read it really really did like it I just think that it hit me in a bit of a different way because of my experiences and what I saw in this book and some of the things that I identified with especially as a very young girl especially growing up in Alaska especially from a military family like all of my life really fit into this book like I said not quite to this extent but it did um a lot of trigger warnings for many many things like I, I could think of so many things um child abuse, alcohol, uh, spousal abuse, um, rape, like there, there's a lot that happens in this. Um, and while there are bits of the book that really seem very fantastical, um, certain plots, um, like things that are used as plot devices in this, uh, it, for me it still held really really strong. I think it gave it four and a half stars. I can't remember if I rounded up or down. The ending is very weird. The ending is kind of where the plot lost me a little bit but overall still a really strong read and something that I recommend to a lot of people if you have a strong enough stomach to stomach this. I would look up reviews on Goodreads just to make sure. The next question is best sequel you read in 2020 and that's going to be Undercover Bromance. No one is surprised to see this. I fucking love this book. This follows our main character Liv and then also Brayden. Brayden and Liv are both from the original Bromance book club book. Um, there are two main characters in that book and Liv is the sister of the wife from the original book whose name I cannot remember right now. I'm really sorry. And Brayden is actually, we just call him Mac in um, the bromance book club is one of the men in the actual bromance book club this book was really cool i actually liked it more i think than i liked the first one so like i said it does follow two characters that i absolutely love Liv is very in your face fuck you like people should be treated equal like she very much so reminds me of kind of how i feel about myself um but she basically live or lives she works as a pastry chef at this very expensive very like high to do kind of restaurant and the owner of that restaurant is an asshole and he is sexually assaulting and bullying and just really attacking a lot of the female staff and Liv finds out that that's happening and decides to take him down once she is fired because a lot of shit blows up in her face and he basically threatens her as well because she walks in on one of her co-workers being sexually uh, assaulted by him and she enlists the help of Brayden who she doesn't like because Brayden is a bit of a bro but in this you get to see a lot of Brayden's soft side. What I really like about this book and why it was my favorite sequel that I've read so far this year is because Brayden is one of those characters who fully believes in taking accountability for past actions, taking accountability for past ways that maybe he used to think when it came to women because he is kind of the player of the group even though obviously the bromance book club exists in a different capacity like it's supposed to be a book club that they're all in to become better men but Brayden really still kind of struggles with that. He's the only one in the group that is single, people aren't really sure why he's in the group but he is the one who kind of started it. Um, and you get a lot of that story. So I did like that aspect. It, it has a lot to do with, like I said, about calling other men out on their shit. And I really liked the way that was addressed in this book. And it wasn't heavy handed. So definitely my favorite sequel that I've read. If you haven't read these books and you're into romance, I would recommend it. It's a sports kind of romance, um, which I definitely appreciate. 
Number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. For that, I'm going to go with Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. I loved the first one, Skyward, so, so much. And I don't know if this came out this year, but to me, I'm not somebody who really follows like new releases, old releases, like that kind of thing. Um, but I really, really, really want to read this. Um, Spensa is one of the most interesting characters I've ever read when it comes to story development and character development, which is incredibly important to me. The series follows, once I said, Spensa, um, and her, her mother, and her grandma are kind of cast out of the society that they live in because there are people that inhabit this planet. I'm not sure if it's like a planet or if it's like a rock that they've turned into like a space station that they all live in, um, but they are kind of cast out of society because her father is accused of basically abandoning their people, turning on their people, becoming a traitor, and Spensa really wants to follow in his footsteps and join the academy. I um, mean, the first one, she is accepted through a lot of strife and a lot of attempting to prove herself, um, and this one, I'm really excited to see kind of where it goes because of the cliffhanger that the last one ended on, which obviously I can't really tell you. But the reason why I'm really excited to read this and why I need to read this as soon as possible, because like I said, the characters are stunning. Brandon is so good at writing great characters and people say like, this is a YA novel and it's still really strong and it absolutely is. There's a lot of twists and turns and like little smaller stories that run throughout that kind of all come together in the end. It's one of those books that leaves you with a cliffhanger, but it doesn't leave you with so many questions. A lot of authors like to do that. They like to make a bunch of questions and then just hope that that gets you to want to read the next one. And then by the time you get to the fourth book, you finally get all your answers. This one definitely answers some things and then presents you with new questions towards the end. Very, very strong writing style. Very, very strong characters. Uh, my favorite character is actually the ship, uh, which I didn't think Brandon could make me fall in love with a ship, but here we are. The next one we have here is Biggest Disappointment, and this makes me really sad, but it'd be in the name of the wind. Now, I'm excited to read the next one, um, The Wise Man's Fear, but this was really disappointing. And I think it's because I had read it before and liked it um, and had heard so many great things about it. But this book overall was really disappointing to me for a couple of reasons that I think will probably be resolved in the second one. This book follows Kvothe, um, who it's telling a story of him, he is telling a story of him when he is younger. And the Chantry actually kills his family and a lot of people that are in this troop that he is in. And a lot of the book follows him trying to kind of figure out what's going on while also going to this school, this like um, university basically to learn different types of magic. And the thing that I didn't like about this is because Kvothe is an unreliable narrator, a lot of the book is spent him just making himself seem better than he is. He's super smart. He's super wise. He can get out of any kind of uh, situation that he's in. He's very quick thinking. He's very suave. He's very well spoken. He's very musically inclined. There's just so much and that was really bugging me and a lot of people said he's an unreliable narrator. Kind of the point of the book makes a lot of sense. But because of that, the middle of the book really drug for me. I usually like like university settings where people are learning magic or learning, you know, whatever. Um, but I didn't like it in this. I also didn't like the main love interest in the story either, although that is sort of resolved towards the end of the book. I will say the first 25% of this book, fantastic. The last 25% of this book, fantastic. The middle 50% just really drug for me. I gave it three stars, so not the worst book. It was still enjoyable, but it is, I would think, the most disappointing because I think I had just such high hopes for this and it just really didn't meet my expectations. Next one we have here is, oh, I, I skipped one. So that was number five. Number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. The reason why I skipped that is because I don't do, like I said, most anticipated releases. I really don't pay a whole lot of attention to stuff like that. I guess I would say the next book in the Bromance Book Club, I do believe that that's coming out in 2020. But I, like I said, I don't really pay attention to that. And that's why I bulldozed over that entire question. <laughs> The next one that we have here is Biggest Surprise. And the biggest surprise book that I read this year would be Starless Sea. This follows your main character, Zachariah Rollins, and he is walking down the road one day when he's a very young man and he sees a door that is painted or what appears to be painted on the side of a building and he doesn't open the door and it begins like a story within a story in his life. Um, the reason why I really like this book is it's very whimsical. Um, it's very, it's written in a very whimsical way. The story is very whimsical. There's not a full, I feel for me, plot that you can really follow from beginning to end with this book. It's very much so a journey that you go on. Um, I think it would have been really cool to be written in short story versions, um, like little short stories about everything. But I loved the depth and the feel of this book. Biggest surprise, hands down, because if you guys remember, I think I filmed an anti-haul or something that I was like, I'm never going to read this book. And I ended up really liking it. I gave it four, 4.5 stars. Um, 
like I said, for me, it's very much so an enjoyment based. Uh, I wouldn't say plot wise that it was the most fantastic. I love the representation. I love the characters. I just love the overall feel of the book. So hands down, one of the most surprising books I've read so far this year. Next one we have here is favorite new authors. So it could be new to you or like a newer author on the scene. And mine would be Lissa K. Adams. I love her writing style. She is very succinct. She's very, it feels like you're, you're coming home. It feels like she's giving you a big hug. Very funny. I love banter. I love funny characters. I love self deprecating characters. I love characters that struggle, but have a lot of heart. And she hands down, most beautiful characters I've ever read. Um, the stories are very fun. They also tackle, I think, very important topics, but they're not done in a very heavy handed way. You guys know, I say that all the time on my channel, I don't like heavy handed writing and she manages to avoid all of that. So hands down, Lissa K. Adams, I will buy every single thing that ever comes out for her. Um, as long as the characters are funny and witty and the story is very heartfelt. Um, she's basically my new Christina Lauren. Like I just can't, chef's kiss, absolutely love her. Number eight is newest fictional crush. And I have to say PETA from The Hunger Games. Yes, I read The Hunger Games, um, the first one and the second one so far this year. And then while the second one wasn't as strong as the first one, I adore PETA. PETA is one of those characters who is very like, family oriented because he com comes from a very big family and if you're not familiar with the Hunger Games it's really um it's a dystopian they live in a society where each district does certain things to kind of help the capital they're very oppressed very um downtrodden and every year they have something called the Hunger Games where they take a boy and a girl from each district um and they fight to the death basically in the Hunger Games and that is to quell any kind of uprising and rebellion really kind of fucked up if you think about it but PETA, bless his soul, the entire book is just trying to save Katniss's dumb ass. But I will say Katniss is actually also a really good character and one that I have a tiny little crush on because both of them are very imperfect. PETA is very like well-spoken, very affable. Katniss is very much so like, I put my shoes on the wrong feet, uh, don't know how to public speak, very like um, cold and callous, but you just can't help but love her. So I'd say the characters from The Hunger Games are hands down like my newest fictional crushes. I just, I really, I really, really like them. I think Peeta is a badass and just a loving little teddy bear. And then obviously Katniss is like my I don't know, like my quirky kind of love. I think they really picked a good actress for her for the movies. Like I haven't seen them, but knowing how the actresses and knowing how Katniss is, I kind of like see the correlation. I just love a lot of, I, I love them a lot. Like they are hands down, I think for me, the ones that I get really like excited to uh, read about in 2020. Also, I can't wait to read the third one, but also I can wait because apparently it's really bad and I'm sad about that. Next one is book that made you cry. And I will say the only book that made me cry this year, which is one of my repetitive answers that I have for you is The Great Alone. This book was really, like I said, very hard to read. And as somebody who really identified with some of the things that happened in this book, it really brought me back to kind of how I, you know, things that I've experienced and made me very teary eyed, very, I think I bawled at one point reading this book. It's very hard to read. It's very, um, like you gotta kind of be in a good headspace. And this one definitely made me cry more, more than a couple of times. The next one is a book that made you happy. And for that, I'm gonna go with The Invisible Library. I cannot remember the main character's name um, because I'm terrible with names. I'm really sorry. I'm, it's just what it is. Um, but she is basically a librarian. And what librarians are is they are, there are different, um, I forget what they're called, but different versions of now, um, different, what are they called? Basically, there's like a hundred other versions of our world that we live in. And what the librarians do is they go to those alternate versions um, to get books that are only specific to this time. So say, for example, there's a book that only exists in our time, they would come to get that book and they build this library. This book was so cool. It's supposed to be steampunk, but I don't really, I, I don't, didn't really get the steampunk vibe, but what I really liked about it is the main character is sassy and honest and very, I don't know, like confident in herself, but also like growing and changing throughout the book. This book reading it really made me happy. It has like a kind of fantasy element to it as well, because at one point in time, her and the gentleman that she's working with do go to another alternate reality where there are fae and vampires and these really crazy mythical things. So it just made me really excited. Like when I was reading it, I was really happy. I actually listened to it on audiobook, which if you do go that route, the narrator reads incredibly slow, like even for me, like very slow. So I did listen to it on like 1.5 speed. 
I mean, it made it seem like a normal person was reading the book, um, but it was a lot of fun. Like the overall feel of it, the espionage, because they're kind of these like detectives in a way. Um, I thought it was really cool and it did make me incredibly happy because it satisfied an itch that I didn't know I had. So it was a lot of fun reading it and it is a series. So I am interested in continuing it hopefully eventually. <laughs> And the last question we have here is the most beautiful book. And for that, I have Anna Kay. This is the most beautiful book I've gotten. Now, this is a book of the month book. I am not supporting book of the month anymore, um, but I already had this book on hand um, from the last time I got my book of the month. Um, this is an Anna Karenna retelling. Now, we're here for the cover. We're here for the most beautiful book. And this is hands down the most beautiful book that I have gotten so far this year. I just think that the simplicity of the blue and the pink and then the photograph on the front, I just absolutely love it. And I'm really excited to hopefully get around to it hopefully in 2020. Oh no, I have one more. I'm just failing at this today. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I actually have a few that I really, really want to get through. Now, not going to spend too much time talking about any of them. First one is The Poppy War for obvious reasons. Apparently it's soul crushing. The Whisper Man, which is creepy and has small children in it, which is also a good one for me. Violet by Scott Thomas, which is a repeat author for me. I really liked another book that he did and I'm really excited to read this one. And the last one, which has been on my TBR for a while, is Imaginary Friend, which is told from the perspective of a really young character, which is, seems really interesting to me. So those are the books I need to read before the end of the year. And my camera's dying, so that is going to complete this tag. Like I said, I'll tag people in a pinned comment up above. Let me know some of your answers for this, or if you have filmed this video, link it down below so other people can go and watch it. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. I wanted to also talk about it because I feel like I can't, once again, cannot continue business as usual without also addressing this. And I wish this was a beer because I'm going to need a drink after talking about this. If you're not on Twitter, um, which I don't really think you need to be on Twitter to have heard about kind of what's happening.